Uh, YouTube, this is Patrick, and this is my review of Breaking Bad's mid-season finale. Shit. First of all, let me just say, I actually thought I really loved the episode. I thought it actually was just visually uh, stunning, and it was just beautifully paced. It was just really, really well done. The director, Michelle McLaren, has done some of the best episodes of the series, including One Minute, which is one where Hank gets shot, and uh, Four Days Out, the one where Walt and Jesse are uh, spend four days in the RV out in the desert. And uh, she did a brilliant job, and I think she's actually joining Game of Thrones next season, and she's going to direct one or two episodes, so I'm really excited to have her on that show. And, um, yeah, I think uh, whatever problems some people may have had with this episode, visually, I don't think there's anything bad you could say about it. And, uh, like I said, it was just really, really well-paced. It felt like it felt like a finale, because a ton of stuff happened, and I, like, I looked at the clock, and I thought the episode was going to almost be over, and we were only a halfway in. Normally you would say that's a bad thing, but it felt like so much had gotten packed in and it was so good that I figured that we were almost done and we were at, you know, the 9 or the 10.30 mark. Okay, first we kind of opened with a little bit of the aftermath with what happened with Mike last week. Uh, Mike was going to get dissolved. That sucks. That just sucks to see. He, um... You know, a lot of people were complaining about how, like, Mike made poor decisions. I know I mentioned this last week. I don't want to spend time on it. But I think it's funny that not a lot of people made the same complaints about Gus last season when he made uh, such poor decisions. And people say, oh, but he was emotionally and you know compromised or whatever. It was the same thing with Mike. So I think people need to take a look at how much they complained about Gus and how much they complained about Mike and you know kind of compare it. So just wanted to get throw that out there. Walt went to Lydia, like he said, and I thought it was a good scene because it dealt with all of the aftermath of what happened. It got Walt the nine or ten names that he wanted. It kind of also established, you know, what we knew, like how, how is Lydia going to give him these names and stay alive? And clearly his intention was to poison her. He had the ricin. And it worked so well because not only did they solve that, but they gave him, you know, a future storyline with the whole Czech Republic thing. So I just thought it was really well done. And uh, Lydia is kind of growing on me a little bit. I'm getting used to her, you know, paranoia. And, well, she's a little more confident this episode, I think, because Mike is out of the picture. But um, I'm kind of looking forward to seeing more of Lydia next season, because as things will obviously now unravel, she'll be really on edge. All right, now, the uh, the the killings of the ten guys was just really well done with the uh, the music and uh, cutting back to Walt in a you know, very, very dark house. That house has been so dark all season, just so well, so well lit, um, just to kind of signal, you know, what's really going on there in that household. And I love that it was kind of just like a, it was pretty much straight out of The Godfather. I know they mentioned like Scarface, but it was basically like The Godfather killings. Um, you know, with like Michael um, being at the baptism and then just all the other guys getting killed. So uh, it felt very, very appropriate. I knew that that's exactly how they were going to do it. But um, again, it was just well done, very brutal, and they saved the worst one for the last guy. Uh, was it a little over the top when they just kept on stabbing the guys over and over and over again? Yeah, maybe. But, um, still, it, uh, I enjoyed it very much. Well, probably shouldn't say I enjoyed it, but I did. The great Hank Walt scene, first of all, again, with the colors, Hank wearing a white shirt, Walt, Walt was in, I don't know, I forget what color, but it was very dark, uh, sitting in Marie's house with a purple rug, you know, underneath him, and just having, like, another calm discussion, and Dean Norris was really good in the scene. He, uh, his line about chasing monsters looking right at Walt, you know, it was kind of, it was just sad to see. And, um, it was, you know, hearing that, and then when he put everything together at the end of the episode, which I'll get to, um, you know, just finding out who that monster is by the end. So it was really, um, it was nice to kind of really clearly see what he thought, thought of this man before he found out who he was. Probably the biggest surprise of the episode was the three month transition they did. Because this whole series, four and a half seasons, has been over the span of one year. And now in about, in a couple of minutes, we went, um, uh, you know, we went over three months. Which makes sense. And we knew, I think, they were going to do that. We just didn't know how. And they got us just a little bit closer to the, um, to, you know, the, the flash forward we saw in the beginning. I'm not sure if they flashed, if they moved up again after Walt said he was out. But uh, I guess we're nine months closer to uh, Walt's 52nd birthday. Maybe even closer than that. I'm not quite sure. But the whole transition thing was great. The, the you know, cutting to the airplanes, flying over the houses that kept on getting the different, you know, um, 
with the fumigation like tents over them and everything like that just really visually well done again great job with the director and everyone and uh, great great choice of song very very funny it's gonna be stuck in my head now and um yeah but it was it was just kind of jarring to see like we knew they were gonna do something like that um but it's very different from what the show's done before and um i think that is another because it is the last season there's just different things you're going to see now it's a different show because that it, because it is ending Walt finally got what he wanted. He made more money than he could have possibly imagined, and he wasn't happy. He was sitting by the pool depressed. Now, we don't know what happened with the cancer treatment. I'm going to pretty much go ahead and say that the cancer is back um, in some form, because he looked very, very humbled. Uh, he looked the closest to Walt, I think, that we've seen in a couple of seasons, basically. It, uh, you know, and Skyler saw it, obviously, because she went right after him to the pool and, you know, basically saw the opportunity to kind of plead her case. Because probably because she saw that she would plead her case to Walt this time, not to this, you know, Heisenberg monster, basically. But um, I thought it was just interesting that he got what he wanted and he wasn't happy, which we all kind of knew was going to happen. But. I like that it happened in this episode and they dealt with it now because I really thought that was going to take till sometime next season for something like that to happen, but uh, apparently not. All right, there are a lot of callbacks to previous episodes, which I love. You know, it is um, the final, or it's getting toward the end, so usually when you get toward the end, you do callbacks to everything else you've seen before. Uh, starting right out with the fly, um, which obviously reminiscent of the fly episode from season three. Uh, the fly kind of represents contamination and corruption, and Walt tried to kill it the first time in that season three episode, but now I guess it's supposed to kind of represent that he just, like, stared at it because he's now completely corrupt, uh, and there's just no more room for contamination. That's what I get out of it, whatever. Then there was the painting that, uh, it was the same painting he saw in season two where he was in the hospital for his, like, um, little escapade where he was naked. And then it was supposed to kind of represent him going away from his family, now, it's, I mean, I don't know, is he just so far gone? I mean, how much more can he go away from his family? I don't know what, uh, what really to make of it, but it was just there. Then, of course, there's the same shot of the, when he goes into the MRI, like back in season one. And, of course, the paper towel dispenser from season two that he punched after he found out that he wasn't dying. And that whole weekend was really for nothing. But, um, which again, so I, I heard some people think that that, that they thought he punched it again. That's why they thought the cancer was back, because that was supposed to be a symbol of it being back. Uh, but I just like the look he gave it. He kind of just kind of like half smiled or whatever. My favorite callback was the moment when Skylar was doing dishes and Walt went up to her and told her that he was out. The thing it reminded me of the most was back in season one when she wanted him to get chemotherapy and he didn't do it. And then the next morning she was washing dishes. He came up behind her. And he just kind of whispered to her that I would do it. Um, again, he seems so humbled and close to the original uh, Walt that we haven't seen in a while. That I just thought it was really just a, a nice little moment. A great little moment, actually. And Skylar's face in this episode toward Walt for the first time all season didn't have that hatred in it. Which, again, as awful as, as Walt has been and everything, it's kind of nice to see. Because we, you know... That was the whole point of why he started doing this. And he, you know, he's done terrible things that he still deserves to pay for, but, I mean, sorry, I like the guy. I, I do root for him still, I guess. Um, it didn't take that long, which is, you know, you gotta hand it to the actors and the writers, at least for me, that I cared. You know, at the first half of the episode, I thought this guy was just gonna get worse and worse and worse, and then when I saw there was like a ray of hope for him i wanted him to find it like you shouldn't want that he's done too many awful things but they're just gonna make us feel bad for him and then just ruin him probably which is just gonna hurt even more which makes sense jesse didn't do much this episode and didn't have really the biggest you know season this year uh but the still the scene with him and uh, wall was great clearly he's afraid of him because he went to get the gun um but again, it was a nice scene. Again, it was all about reminiscing about the RV and all that stuff. And instead of a visual callback, it just, you know, it just played up the nostalgia of the show. And just better times, basically. And clearly that Walt, you know, 
wish they were back in back at those better times because now yeah he's got everything but you know he's just not happy and um it was just it was just a really really good scene and uh it's interesting to see where jesse's gonna go in those last eight episodes well with the ending of this of this episode we kind of know it's probably not gonna be anywhere good before i get to the very last scene i'll have to get to the scene right before which was the kind of like picnic at the white house perhaps the most like nerve-wracking thing i've ever watched because and for anyone that watched that episode you you i mean i thought junior was gonna get shot in the head or someone from the cartel or some of the german or the czech republic or something the the dicks from arizona or somebody was gonna come in there something awful was gonna happen or the baby was going to get dropped in the water. I don't know. I didn't know what was going to happen, but I truly thought someone was going to die right then and there, or there was going to be an explosion or something. It was the best scene in the episode because it was just completely on edge. And even though nothing happened, it was clear that the writers knew that by doing that, they would put everyone on edge. And uh, it was just absolutely brilliant. And uh, that's what Breaking Bad can do. It can make a scene like that that shouldn't, you know, give you that feeling and just make you feel that way. And uh, that's why I love the show. Okay. The ending of the episode, where Hank finds out that, well, it looks like he finds out that Walt is uh, the man he's looking for. And I'm sure there are plenty of people that were underwhelmed by the moment, because it's a moment we've been waiting for for a very long time. I liked it. I'm glad it wasn't just, like, Hank seeing, you know, the Heisenberg hat or Hank actually catching Walt in the act of doing something. Because it allowed Hank to use his, you know, his brains. Like, he saw something and he was able to put it together. Um, so I'm happy about that. It gave, you know, Hank a little more credit, I think. Um, maybe some people think it, it you know, hurt, why, why would Walt have that lying around? Uh, I mean, he's had it lying around since the beginning of this season. I think it was episode two when he brought the book back. Um, but just like his arrogance, and it's just basically, I guess, the whole idea that you're your own worst enemy. And just everyone, you know, even Gus Fring makes mistakes and all that stuff. Um... I also like it completely changes, like, when you watch that scene where uh, Hank and Walt talk about the book the first time, you know, Walt's like, yeah, you got me. Every time you rewatch that scene from now on, we're going to know that this is the moment that ruined Walt completely from whatever happens. Like, this is the moment that, you know, completely ruined him. And uh, it's the same thing with Mike last week. Like, you, you think of that scene between Mike and Walt in season three with the half-measure speech, and we know that Mike never really followed up on, you know, taking, going full measure, and that was his downfall. So just the idea that you can rewatch this show and see these scenes with a new perspective, I just think is great. And that's, um, yeah, that's another thing that the scene did very much. It uh, Also, I love the idea that the roles are reversed, and now Hank knows something that Walt doesn't. And uh, that's a great thing next season, where how long is it going to take for Walt to figure it out, and Hank's going to be, you know, the one with the secret. And Hank, you know, obviously he's going to be smart about it and not just confront him. He's going to, you know, because he doesn't really have evidence. But he'll be able to put it all together and um, he will confront him eventually. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how that plays out. And also because it's just a complete cruel joke that Walt did this, he finished. He was out. He was done. Skylar hadn't really forgiven him, but you could almost see that she was so elated that it was over that you know, forgiveness or at least some sort of common ground was possible. And the kids would be happy and the kids would grow up happy as long as, you know, no one else came back for Walt. But, uh, I mean, I guess Todd knew how to cook by now, so it would, you know, that would work. Jesse would have his money and he would be out. Just, Hank had seemed to gotten over the whole Heisenberg thing. You know, he was in good spirits and everything like that. So everything was over and done and it could have even been the end of the series if they wanted to end it that way. It would have been completely odd and, you know, ridiculous. But it just ended up being cruel that he had gotten out and now he won't. And uh, that's exactly what he deserves, yet it still sucks. Um, what sucks is that we have to wait till next summer for to watch how this wraps up. But I'm sure it's going to be worth the wait. And I can't wait for it. And uh, thanks for watching, guys. Let me know what you thought. And, uh, yeah, I, uh, I have no TV to watch on Sunday night. I have to go, I got Boardwalk Empire comes back in like two weeks, Dexter comes back in a month, then The Walking Dead, uh, I got football, my Giants start on Wednesday, so, yeah.
Go Giants. All right, that's it, guys. Take care.